any fisherman will tell you that that is probably the best noise that you can possibly hear. You're sitting on the boat or you're sitting on the dock, you're reeling in your personal best fish, you got your buddy recording it, and what are you wearing but some raggedy old t-shirt that looks like crap. Why have that incredible moment ruined by not having on the best high performance fishing shirt that you can get? That's where our friends at Tackle Up come in. Tackle Up is a fishing lifestyle and apparel company that is making some of the finest, highest quality fishing shirts I have ever worn. Also, we may have a Talking 215 exclusive shirt on their website that you definitely need to check out. Tackleup.com. We know a ton of you go down to the Delaware beaches during the summer season. So when you're down there, you have to head over to Bethany at the corner of Atlantic and Garfield and check out Tackle Up's new storefront location. Selling Grundens, Who Rags, and of course, their incredible design of high performance fishing shirts. Definitely check them out. And while you're there, tell them that Talking 215 sent you. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Talking 215. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another edition of the Talking 215 podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whatever time of the day you are listening, welcome to this week's edition of Talking 215. We're back. It's Sean's bedtime. Coach is here, and we have the most hated man in Philadelphia Eagles Twitter right now, Tommy T-Bone Tomahawk Stakes, back in the building, making another appearance of coming off of his Thursday live show. Gentlemen, how the hell are we? Good. Excellent. I'm, I feel good, regardless of what people are saying, you know? So. You look good, man. That chiseled jawline. You're chiseled cutting jawline. a little weight, getting that summer mm-hmm. bod ready. Mm-hmm. Coach rocking the no sleeves as usual. Look, let's just dive right into it. Sean, Joey, you guys weren't on the the Thursday live show. Who would have thought that it would still be the big topic of discussion on Eagles Twitter and everything, but our own Tomahawk Stakes still catching some strays from some people talking about the difference between legendary athletes. And Coach, I think you said it best in our text well, thread, whatever, a group text where you're like, look, people need to understand there's a big difference between beloved and legendary. And that's not saying like, we all love these guys. This is no hate. This is not like, ah, he was kind of overrated. We're like, no, this guy was probably, if not the best running back in Eagles history. And Deshaun Jackson, Jackson's clearly the best deep threat the Eagles have ever had and was a hell of a receiver throughout his history. But legendary? Mm. bro it's crazy like look legendary should be reserved for legends right and i'll give you an example one of my favorite phillies of all time was shane victorino the flying hawaiian is he legendary absolutely not but is he no, beloved love him. that everybody loves him right everybody loves him deshaun jackson shady mccoy guys like that brian dawkins legendary you could say that yep. it's just i think people get too caught up especially in the off season where we don't have a lot to talk about right where they're like they'll harp on one thing legendary or they'll harp on one thing like goat greatest of all time or the whole point like bro let's just have discourse let's just have conversations let's talk <laughs> and everything like that i think you could still say that the way what happened to deshaun and shady was messed up regardless of what how you hold them whether it be beloved, legendary, just okay, pro bowlers, whatever you want to call it, it's still messed up at the end of the day. So I think that's the main thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah I mean, saying somebody's not a legend isn't saying, oh, but, you know, Chip Kelly made all the right moves. No. Yeah, exactly. Like, like that's exactly. not you, just saying that somebody's not a Hall of Famer and a legend amongst his franchise isn't saying that he should have been cut. He should have been traded. Like, it's just saying, no, this guy was phenomenal was great but i kind of hold legends to like like you said tom like keep it on two hands there's 10 or less legends right like these guys probably don't make the cut yeah i mean this is this is peak off-season bullshit by the way like Mm -hmm. we are so and just have a total lack of news um but i mean what was it a couple months ago we were all talking about who's on our mount rushmore of eagles not a single person had LaShawn McCoy or Deshaun Jackson as much as we love them. But Deshaun Jackson was probably my, it is still probably my favorite, my favorite Eagles wide receiver of all time. But it, the, the definition of legend changes from person to person. It also depends on how long ago they played. I mean, you talk about, we spent, uh, what, the last month or so talking about Kendrick Lamar and Drake. And, and that just reminded me of like, rap legends too rap legends are just old heads like 
the the further removed you are from being an active player, an active artist, like the more likely you are to be considered a legend, right? These guys, while they were in the middle of their playing days, I mean, Deshaun Jackson's last stint with the birds, we, the entire fan base could not stand him. Like he was just, he was constantly injured. Right. And when he was on the field, he was just a distraction. Right. So the these opinions change greatly over time. And it's just been in the case of Deshaun Jackson just a couple of years. Like he was just on the team a couple of years ago, guys. He was not, we were cursing him to the wind, couldn't stay healthy, worth a shit. And now, now we're fighting tooth and nail over whether or not somebody defines him as a legend. Like, please legendary stop. moments. No doubt. Absolutely. And again, I'm no talking doubt. about, I, I just said, he's my favorite, like, Eagles wideout of all time. I've enjoyed watching him play. Miracle of the Meadowlands, the, the second one, was is my fav- my second favorite football play of all time behind the Philly special. Like, the man is, is I owe a lot to the guy. But, oh, hands down. And, and I may even venture to call him a legend. Right? But I can totally see if he's not a, a Super Bowl champion, if he wasn't. Um, if he wasn't a lifelong Eagle, then I get it. I didn't. I totally understand not wanting to, to bestow that title upon him. Yeah. I mean, uh, Sean, we talked about just a couple months ago, like this whole number retirement thing. I would argue you're not a legend unless you can say like, yeah, they should retire his number. And really like is Shady or, or Jackson, like are anybody saying we should retire their numbers. Shady's is like honorary retired. But if you do remember back to my tweet, I did say this in my very aggressive tweet that deserved to get roasted because I was very cocky about it. I said, Eagles legends, laughing emoji, don't project your childhood on us. (laughs) And what I meant was like, to me, age factors into it and generation factors into it. So like, For me, the legends are the guys that when I was like 14 and 15, I was like, oh, man, like they're my heroes. Those are my legends. But somebody else might be like, well, Deshaun Jackson was like my childhood player and Shady McCoy. So they could look at those guys similar to how I look at Brian Westbrook and Donovan McNabb and Brian Dawkins, guys like that. So it it definitely – I'm glad I, I I reacted that way because to me, I was like, oh, there's no way that anyone my age actually considers these guys legends because of what, <laughs> mostly what Sean said, they, they played too recently. They didn't really win anything with us. Um, so it was, it was a good eye opening discussion to have, to be able to like, think about this and what, what is a legend really. And I'm, I'm glad we, we all could, give our opinion on this because it it is crazy how much it varies from person to person yeah and it's not like somebody's wrong there's no really it's it's very subjective not at all yeah like it's it's very very subjective and it's like i had people reaching out to me during our live show putting comments like why are you guys talking about norm van brocklin like yeah he's right he's an eagles legend you know what i mean chuck Chuck bednarik uh randall cunningham reggie white White. like yep steve van buren yeah, probably legends. No, right. and not even probably, like legends. Yeah, and and like to me, it's funny because people are trying to get so technical. Like, well, Shady McCoy is our franchise leader in rushing yards. Okay, so what what happened to the last guy that had that record before Shady broke it? Because he's a recent player. Is that guy also a legend? Because at one point he held the the record. And then what happens if that if that record gets broken and you can't say Shady McCoy is the franchise leader? Is he no longer a legend? Because that's your primary reason you're saying, well, he leads the franchise in rushing, so he has to be a legend, right? That's a good point. That, 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 that's like time stamping a guy. So it, it, it's not as black and white as people really were trying to make it seem. And um, I'm, I'm glad, again, like I said, we had that, that discussion and everyone got to think about it a different way. Can I, can I just give you props? just for sticking it out because the 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 tone of the discourse from when you immediately posted that video to like two days later it reminded me if you've ever seen bill burr roasting philadelphia okay where he comes out and he's like you guys are a bunch of fucking assholes and the whole crowd is booing him right he's doing a stand-up bit 
And he just spends the next seven or eight minutes just cursing the crowd to the wind. You're all lazy pieces of shit, no good for nothing. And eventually the tide turns and the crowd goes from booing him incessantly to just this roar, uproarious, uh, just a, a applause for the guy. You can see Eagles Twitter over the course of two days, like the immediate knee jerk reaction was like, you know what? Tom, you can go to hell. These guys are legends. And then over the course of two days, you could see more and more people like, wait a second. I see what he's getting at, man. I think he's got a point here. And everybody that didn't uh, like go out of their way to subtweet you and be like, oh, I'm I'm unfollowing him, you know, was like, you know what? I may disagree with you, man, but I see where you're coming from. And I just appreciate just sticking with it. Just you could have logged off for a couple of days. You could have pulled an Elliot Shore Parks and went on vacation for a month. OK, <laughs> but you didn't. You stuck it through and yeah. you made damn sure that even if you didn't agree with him, with you, that you understood where the hell you were coming from. Yeah. And I appreciate that. So thank you. I appreciate that. That was a uh, that was kind words for sure. No, I'm <laughs> just trying to put out the good word, baby. Come on, no doubt. Uh, so look, I, NFL news schedule drops tomorrow. If you're listening to this, you probably listen to this. Uh, the schedule is either dropping or is uh, already has dropped. But we already know our opponents home and away and all. We already know, you know. There's been some leaks. Apparently, they're they're playing what the Ravens week five, like that could be a fun game and all they obviously the season openers in Brazil and everything, but we know the opponents. We talked about this last year and we had a lot of fun with it, but what's a game that you have circled on. You can't even say on your calendar. Cause we don't know as of right now, we don't know when it is, but what's a game that you have circled in your mind as like, Oh, I cannot wait for that game. We obviously Dallas week. Like we know that's always a huge one. Like that, you, you can't use Dallas. We can't use a division rival. But, but coach, I want to start with you. What's a game that you've got circled in your mind as a game you're really looking forward to? Well, I'm going to, I'll be going to the Jags game whenever they announce that date, obviously tomorrow or today by the time this podcast airs. So I'm really looking forward to that because I'll be going to it. But as far as just a fan and viewing the games, um, I think I'm going to steal one. I don't know if it was Sean or Tom said it last time, but the Buccaneers, um, I, I, that's the team that kicked us out of the playoffs last. It's it's how I'm viewing them. I I hold grudges as a fan. I'm weird like that. I may have nothing against you previously, but after seeing your fans' algorithm on my Twitter timeline just because you beat us, it just makes me irate and angry. Kind of like Knicks fans beating the Sixers. Like I I just have like a new disdain. So the Buccaneers, uh, I think they caught us at our worst moment ever. Yeah. Like as all the wheels were falling off, as both coordinators were checked out, this is a new system on offense and defense, a new Eagles team. What we did to reload this offseason, I'm really looking forward to that because the Bucks are going to see what they would have seen had we had competent coaching and players on that, you know, at that time. Hell yeah. Uh, Tom, I was there stakes. What you got? Well, you know, I'll be in the building uh, uh, a couple <laughs> times this year, uh, but I'm cutting it down this year. I'm taking a couple games off. Uh, got to gotta save some cash. But the, the matchups I'm looking forward to really are um, a couple matchups that I really just want to see certain in certain time slots because I've been feeling nostalgic lately. I've been I've been watching old clips of the team early 2000s and. I like the Carolina Panthers and Atlanta Falcons at home. Two games that have a lot of potential to be at 1 p.m. Just give me some of those games. Some some <laughs> some you know, slow pitch softball. Let me hit it out the park. We beat them, you know, pretty handedly. Maybe Kirk Cousins isn't uh, available yet. It's early October in Philly. I love a nice October day, 1 p.m. Philadelphia against a, an NFC South opponent that I feel like we're better than. So. I want to see a couple of those games and I, and I, and it's cool. Cause we're, you know, we're recording before we get the time slots. So I'm really, I'm, I'm speaking into existence. 1 PM time slots for those two games. Be nice if we had more than what one, one o'clock game. Yeah. That was, last, language there. <laughs> we had, we had two or three last year. It was nuts. Yeah. We had three. We were done by like the halfway point of the season. The rest of them two, were all. It was, it was both against Washington too. 
it, it was both games at 1 p.m. against Washington. So, and then there was one other one that we had. It was uh, Arizona on on New Year. I think Listen, it was that wait, one. Wait until this. Wait until Maybe the schedule comes out. Give me a nine o'clock game. I know we're not going over to London. I don't care. All right, we're going to Brazil. <laughs> all these other places. Give me a 9 a.m. game. No, 9 coach. You're- Coach, you're spot on. I want to see us play the Bucks just to see that level of growth from one season to the next. See, see the difference the coordinators make. Check out the shiny new toys we have as far as our draft class, right? Um, it, no, but honestly, I think that's much more of a revenge game. I'm expecting to win that game probably by a pretty decent total if I had to guess now. Um, but, I, I mean, Jake, you mentioned it earlier, the Ravens game. Uh, maybe it's just a little bit of recency bias because we're having a lot of, uh, oh, do we expect Jalen Hurts to be a top five quarterback this year talk, right? And not to to jettison from one question to the next, but I want to see him go up against another consensus top five quarterback, right? I want to I want to see them. It's, I'm sure it's going to be, I think they even said it was a, a, a primetime game. It was week five. I don't actually, I'm blanking yeah, the, on the leak. Day. The leak is that it's week five primetime. Right. Wow. So you're going to get a larger audience drawn. Every, everybody's eyes are going to be drawn to this game, right? We're going to get a chance to see how Jalen stacks up this season against the, the cream of the crop. I'm, I'm jacked up for that one just as much as any of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, that was uh, probably number two on my list. Tom, I love that. I just give me, give me a nice relaxing game. We don't yeah, get enough of those. A nice yeah. uh, sit back one o'clock. Look, you know, halftime, it's so warm enough to go out, throw the pigskin around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. October, October football, September football, NFC. Come on, Michael Penix. Give me Michael (laughs) Penix. Let let that guy play. Come on. Exactly. That'll be a nice battle of two two 26-year-old quarterbacks. That'll be a nice. (laughs) (laughs) No, and I like the, the Bucks revenge game and all, but a game that I'm really looking forward to, just because I'm so over the top confident in our offense. So this is a game where I feel like we need our defense on it. And that's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals mm-hmm. going into Cincinnati. They got a top tier offense. You want to talk about going up against a consensus top five quarterback. I mean, Joe Burrow is pretty damn impressive and, and their wideouts are, I mean, you want to talk about a, a team having wideouts that really compete with the Eagles top two wideouts. That's got to be Chase and Higgins. I mean, they, they've they got some real studs there. They drafted – why I'm, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. I drafted him in my dynasty league. But they drafted a, a pretty pretty highly touted wide receiver that if he can get his head on straight, people are pretty excited about. So I'm excited to see you know so our, our defensive backs against this, uh, this pretty impressive wide receiver room in Cincinnati. I'm hoping it will be similar to the, the Tua – or the two, yeah, the two, uh, Tyreek and Waddle game where we really kind of held Tyreek down to nothing. And obviously, we know Waddle kind of left that game banged up a little bit. But I, I'm really looking forward to see what our DBs can do against this this wide receiver room over in Cincinnati. And I'm going to be putting all eyes on Quinion Mitchell, putting all eyes on Cooper Sharp to John, seeing, uh, seeing what the rooks can do against some proven guys. That's going to be a welcome to the NFL moment for them. Yeah. I mean, they have a, we have a couple of those on the schedule. Dallas, when you have to go against a guy like C.D. Lamb, it, it's going to be interesting to see the matchup we can play against him. Um, we got, obviously, the Bengals. Got it's the going Ram. to be tough. Uh, yeah, the, the Rams, Rams again. Damn good yeah. wideouts. Yeah, yeah you got... that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's oh. – I mean, the Bucks. Man. Good wideouts Bucks, there. You got... Bucks have good wideouts. Yep, yep, for sure. Cleveland have, has good wide out. We we play Cleveland this year in 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 Philly, and they have, man, they have a, fuck Cleveland. They got the Amari Amari Cooper is a our bitch. Worst our worst nightmare. <laughs> so hopefully we can get some revenge on some of these guys. Man, screw that whole team. Screw that whole city, man. <laughs> I agree, but they are good. <laughs> no, they're not. I mean, they, they, have, they have good tough, players. They have a tough, not a good team. They have a tough. They have they a have tough defense. Players, defense sure. is tough. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. I, I ain't worried about Cleveland. <laughs> Me Coach, I know before we got started, you said you had a question to pose to the group. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to ask you guys, you know, since we're on the topic of Eagles here, I wanted to ask each of you, give me three players on the Eagles that think, you think are most important to the team's success this year, or three people that are most important to the team's success this year, not named Jalen Hurts. Um, it doesn't have to be the three best players on the Eagles, but I want three people, 
from you guys that you think, hey, if this guy gives me everything, then we're going to be looking good. What three, besides the obvious Jalen Hurts, are you looking at as a fan that if they have a good year, you could be like, okay, yeah, if this guy plays well, I know we're we're doing well or whatever the case may be. I have to go ahead, start off. Kellen Moore, Vic Fangio, and Jordan Davis. It's not bad, not bad. I I, I like those answers. I, I was figuring somebody would be give a couple coordinator answers in there, so I like that. Yeah, I mean, once you said people, it's you know, it's got to be those. Like Sirianni said in the end of season presser that whoever they bring in on offense is going to have the ability to run their offense. It's not going to be a Sirianni offense where they're just calling the plays. He's given up. He's taken over. You know, he's taken a Tomlin kind of style on head coaching, a Harbaugh style on head coaching, on being a more CEO than a guy with real his, his hands really involved in in the play call and offensive defense so obviously Vic Fangio is going to be able to run his full style of defense and then the reports are Kellen Moore is going to be able to run his full offense so if these guys are are the coordinators that we believe them to be and that they've shown in years past to be then we're going to be pretty good and then the reason I chose Jordan Davis there's a couple of different guys I'm not going to say who else I had because I don't want to take anybody else's answer but I like Tom's tweet earlier in this week and everybody knows I'm a big Jordan Davis guy. I got really close to them in training camp. Nicest guy on the team, like hands down. The guy spent 10 minutes after every day at training camp. We were just bullshit and talking. Was the last guy to leave the field every single time. Would just hang out, talk with people. His family would come to almost every pra- practice. Super nice guy. But aside from that, it's so vitally important him taking on that nose tackle role. It's the first time we're going to be able to see him really be in his actual position, his position of comfort. And you know, talk about like we all trust Baldy. We we all think that he probably was a little overweight. He probably wasn't taking the conditioning as well as he should have. So hopefully he can uh, he can come in a little bit better, little a uh, little more in shape and everything. But he's going to be a, a vital part of this defensive line when you're looking at like look at our D tackles. You got him. You got Jalen Carter. You got Milton Williams, uh, Marlon Tui Pelotu, like. You know, Jalen Carter, obviously, we all know and love. And then Milton Williams, we're excited about and hope that he can continue to progress. He looked pretty good last year. But Jordan Davis, if he doesn't pan out, it could be a, it could be a big glaring weakness on this team when we're switching to a 3-4. Yeah, so when you, he posed the question, that was the first name that sprung up in my head. Right? Jordan, Jordan Davis, Davis, really? If we're talking about Jordan Davis wow. having a monster year, then it, the, then the rest of the defense as a whole is probably playing exceptionally well, right? Um, yeah. I'm not going to pick that one because you already picked it, but um, I, I'm going to actually going to be alone with that. No, come on. Um, I, I mean, especially after how like maligned he's been over this entire off season, over the entire like last third of the season, right? How we were talking about how he was not meeting expectations and and possibly even labeling him with that bust label, right? Um, but for my answer on defense, at least, I'm going to scooch down the line some. I think if we're talking about Josh Sweat having a fantastic year, it probably means, again, the rest of the line is playing exceptionally well. This is another one of those guys that was they were talking about. He, he completely ran out of steam. It didn't even look like he wanted to be there and play. We saw the potential. We saw what he can do um, in, in a limited number of reps over the last couple seasons he's been here. So that's that's definitely high. he's definitely high up on my list of, of guys that if they play exceptionally well, then the rest of the team is doing so. Um, I, I also thought possibly coordinators. I'm going to lean more, a bit more heavily. I'm going to stay on defense. I think of Vic Fangio. And they are, if we're really sitting there talking about the difference in the actual Fangio scheme, it means that we're playing well, right? Obviously it comes down to the the players, you know, it it comes down to, to uh, the the linebackers playing well. It comes down to these brand new corners, these brand new safeties playing well. Um, But if we're talking about Vic Fangio scheme paying off, it means the entire defense is doing great. Um, Number three, I am going to go on offense um replacing a future hall of famer here we gotta have make sure cam jurgens has a great season that's a guy for me if he's shifting over to center if we're talking about how awesome cam jurgens is playing following up one of the best centers of all time then our offense is probably running on all cylinders and we're doing fantastic those are my three. Yeah. No, I like those. Um, yeah. And, and I almost got away with uh, all three of mine standing, but got the very last 
minute you took Cam Jurgens from me, and <laughs> that was gonna be that was gonna be my uh, my third. So I look at uh, so I'm I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna say this was my my spiel I was gonna give Nick Sirianni. It goes without saying, like he's to me. It's like your head coach is everything. So I'm gonna pretend Joey said no Sirianni, no Hurts, because to me those are givens. Ha- coaching quarterback league, it has to be. So the three guys that are the biggest departures are Hassan Reddick, Fletcher Cox, and Cam Jurgens. So I'm looking at, or I'm sorry, Jason, Jason Kelsey. Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I'm looking at Cam Jurgens. I'm looking at Jalen Carter. To, to be our new elite pass rushing D tackle like Fletcher. I mean, overall, not just pass rushing, but everywhere, our new superstar. And then it's time for Nolan Smith to pan out and pay off second year. Obviously like I'm not in any sort of doubt of him. He just didn't get much of a chance, but with Hassan Reddick leaving, I know we got Bryce up. I know we have Josh sweat. Nolan Smith is the guy that really we need to see. So it's it's Jalen Carter, Cam Jurgens, and Nolan Smith. If those three guys are playing really well, then those drafts look like home runs, and we've really paid off big time with with these young guys that we expect to step up. Yeah, uh, I, I like all those answers. Cam Jurgens was my number one um, in this scenario, uh, just obviously replacing a legend in Kelsey. And if he's not skipping a beat, if you can still do your tush push the way you need to, if you're still creating those running lanes, we know is athletic on pooling, things like that. And providing, I think what's underrated is providing a comfort level to whoever our right guard is, right? Because that Tyler right guard Steen looks like it is. Yeah, it's probably going to be Steen. Um, you know, who knows in certain packages what's going to happen, but that right guard is not going to be somebody who's used to being an everyday starter. So providing that comfortability next to him, Jurgens as being a potential captain in between him and Lane, I think is huge. Uh, number two for me is Bryce Huff, right? Like, uh, Tom, you just talked about it a little bit. You know, you're losing Hassan Reddick. Um, we paid you before we let go of Hassan Reddick, okay? We invested that much in you. You were the first person we signed in free agency. You were who we wanted was Bryce Huff. And understand what the standard is for edge rushers on this team. And it's to get sacks and it's to harass the opposing quarterback and it's to – dominate uh, offensive tackles i need you to be that guy if we were the first one to sign you right out the gate so bryce huff cam jurgens and then third for me is going to be vic fangio um i think we all know what a a shit show it was last year with the two different dcs there's reports of people not talking to each other uh patricia not talking to to people like uh, there was just all sorts of just dysfunction so we talked on the podcast maybe a month or two ago, whatever the case was about how there was this stipulation that we were running a form of the Fangio defense and other people were, if you listen to Fangio's press conference, he's like, I don't know why people say that. He's like, they may take little things here and there, but nobody's running my defense, but me. So I I always thought it was funny when you hear different podcasts or radio shows, or even people writing articles saying, yep, they're running the Fangio defense. And he was like, no, I run my defense. He's like, Mm -hmm. you're running a version of it. And that doesn't have to be the same thing. So um, I I just think Vic Fangio's presence, having that quote unquote adult in the room, him being the head coach of the defense, which is a term that didn't exist last year with us on offense or defense, head coach of the defense, Vic Fangio running his system with his guys. I think it's going to be great. So those are three guys I would look at too. Yeah, and I think you kind of said it there with three of us having Vangio because I was going to say like, oh, I can't believe none of us had a linebacker. But it's like, who are you even going to name? You know what I I mean? mean, There are are of guys, like I was going to say, like if you're talking about N'Kobe Dean playing well or Devin White playing well, that's huge. You can even say like Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, if one of them have a crazy good year. Um just out, out of nowhere like, like this team we are dependent on a lot of guys that yeah. we don't really know much about right now and it's exciting but at the same time it's like we are putting a lot on on our on our top players like Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley you know it's, Saquon Barkley's coming onto the Eagles uh coincidentally when we our right guard and center are two young guys that we have no clue about so like I think that that overcompensates a little for the fact that we lost Jason Kelsey is like, okay, we yeah. got Saquon Barkley. So he could be another weapon to a line that might take a little bit of a, a, a learning curve here with these young players. So 
it's it's going to be an interesting season for sure with with all that really great question um because it's hard to just think of just three yeah i mean well first of all we have just outland so you know yeah oh i trust i trust i trust i trust the big dog (laughs) and i'm glad we developed cam jurgens for a couple years like this isn't like like some and i and i hate i hate to do this but it's only right right some cowboys fan was talking trash saying you guys haven't replaced fletcher cox and jason kelsey you've signed all these other guys i don't think the off season's going that well for you we replaced jason kelsey and fletcher cox two years prior and like you're you're talking about because we didn't because we signed other guys this year that's what good franchises do they replace you a couple years prior before they get desperate and uh and we have guys that have to step up in the absence of those two guys we've prepped for this and it's time so i'm uh i'm really excited for these guys tom that same question could be flipped around on them could it not i know right yeah they lost a center and a tackle as well and they have rookies they lost, you lost your center your left tackle your wide receiver three uh yeah. You're you're you right. downgraded at running back by getting old <laughs> yeah. Zeke, thinking old some Zeke, nostalgia yeah. is going to play in favor for in the win loss column. Yeah. Um, you know, like what like 100%. what are we doing here? Yeah, uh, what exactly makes and no how sense. Do you players, we talked about the Sean Jackson early on the show, right? Uh, you all remember how kind of like alligator arm Deshaun was when he was heading into his contract year because he didn't want to get hurt and he wasn't as explosive until he got paid because of that security. Right. You got Dak Prescott, CD Lamb, and Micah yeah. Park yep. all up for contracts. And the funny thing is, is well, oh in. yeah, and your your head coach is also on the last year of his contract too. So that all weighs on the psyche of a football player, right? And for the mm-hmm. people that are like, oh, if it doesn't work out with Dak, we have Trey Lance in the wings. Guess who else is on the last year of their contract, guys? Trey Lance oh, is too. Right, Trey Lance. So, yeah. so so what could you even say to an Eagle fan? where you're sitting yeah. right now. I just don't understand the fact of like sitting on the corner with no lunch money, you know, waiting for the bus and you see a guy in a Ferrari right by you and you start laughing at him. Like, yeah. dude, you got to put things into perspective. <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense from where you're sitting at. Yeah, not at all. And, and that's the thing. Like, I don't think any of, I think they're, they're in a massive state of denial. It's a lot of very very overly optimistic fans they have the stock it's stockholm syndrome honestly but yeah i just thought that was funny that like you're you're trying to talk about a team that you don't even really follow and you know i'm not like i'm sure if you know like we were just saying about their their tackle and their center they have guys now that they're gonna play there they're these rookies these young guys they're excited about it's funny some fans don't think other teams have that like we have those young guys and you know we, we're just talking about them on this show but it's like it's crazy that people talk like that. I'm excited for our young guys. I'm ready to see him go, but it is it is a lot on their shoulders. I I so I've got two two quick comments. First, the Cowboys seem to be the only franchise that don't have fans. They have brand or team ambassadors. <laughs> right? The people on Twitter are Cowboys ambassadors. They are there to mm-hmm. to prop up their product mm-hmm. and and it, just not have they're completely super biased not they're not real people they're npcs but also i'd I'd like to put a fourth person here just because nobody mentioned him we talk a lot about the linebackers and and not knowing who's going to be starting also i feel like i don't know who's going to be in the secondary a whole lot there's going to be a couple different ways we could split this a whole lot of new faces a couple injuries thrown into the mix um and we have one guy our our cornerback who is entering now his age 33 season guys if we're talking about Darius Slay playing lights out like he has been in years past we're good that we're was good. that was the guy I, was, I didn't name because I swear somebody was going to say him or I was like you know I have another guy but I'm not going to say him because I don't want to take anybody's it was Darius Slay he needs yeah, to I mean, have one he, more for us great. we don't know we don't know he might play terrible yeah. my lights just yeah. went out it did <laughs> I will say uh I will say uh, June first at twelve oh one a.m. James Bradbury will not be an Eagle. He can't. We've got forty six corners on this team. He's yeah. got to be one of the cuts. Yeah, unfortunately, and fortunately, he will be gone. Uh, June first at twelve oh one a.m. At Delaware Orthopedic Specialists, you're never left in the dark. Not only are they the only fellowship trained surgery center here in the state of Delaware, all of their providers are also specialists. 
which means that they're focusing on each and every part of the body specifically so that when you come in with knee pain, you're getting a doctor specifically devoted to that. Wrist pain, wrist doctor, foot pain, foot doctor, so on and so forth. Why would you go anywhere where you're just going to get a general doctor that knows overall body when you can get somebody that knows the ins and outs of your exact injury? They're going to hold your hand and walk you through each and every step of the process so that you won't have any questions and you'll know exactly what you should be expecting. My family and friends trust DOS and you should too. Give them a call at 302-655-9494 or head on over to delortho.com. Let them know that Talking to in 5 sent you. And after they give you phenomenal care, head on over to Google. Give them a great review. Um, staying with the birds, a little more lighthearted. Uh, we were just talking a ton of offensive line before we head over to the fills. Uh, Jordan Mailata obviously just signed an expen- extension. Friend of the podcast, great guy, massive mammoth of a human being. Uh, I want to say, ask everybody, what is the largest animal that you think Jordan Mailata could win in a fight? Win against in a fight? Just going based off of like weight, because I feel like he's it's got like, like a know, baby like... hippopotamus in the in the tank, you know. A baby uh, hippo, right? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I hippo. mean, a full full grown hippo is going to take anybody. Uh-uh. There's not a living human right. being that can that can win against a hippo. I'm talking bare knuckles, like no weapons, like fully developed. <laughs> and that hippo can't have a weapon, Sean. All right, like, <laughs> no weapons at all. Change my answer. <laughs> that is, I don't. I just see him as a like other than when he's on a football field. I see him as like a gentle giant and I can't even imagine him taking down like an animal like that. Like, I just don't, I see him as such a nice guy and uh, I don't feel comfortable doing that, putting, putting him into a fight against an animal. So I think you ripped the face off of a lion. We have two very different ideas of Jordan. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Tom, who would win in the fight? Jordan Maialata or a thousand chickens? I take the chickens. Wow. Have you ever oh, been around God. chickens? Dude, they're nasty. Those a chickens thousand are... of them? Like, that's so many chickens. Yeah, they can't fly. It's not like they're climbing on top of each other. There's still only ankle, like, thigh. Do they or, like, know they're in a fight? Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, they, I mean, they, they, they were all attacked. Oh, if there was they're a not, thousand chickens. Yeah, they're not going to be able to coordinate. They're still Dude, chickens. A thousand chickens. A thousand a lot. So what are they going to do? They, they're only, they're only they're just gonna, they are They are going to peck and eat and scratch and claw you until you just, like, start decomposing. Like, a thousand of them? They'll just be sending. Okay, okay, but let's say. Pew, 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 at, pew, at like John like Gannon. around you at one time. Like it's not like they're they're not gonna pile up on top of each other. Yeah, wh- what do you mean? Of course they could they could get a little bit of air. They can fly. Absorb worth of chickens. Jump. They can't fly. Chickens can't fly. Yeah, they can. Can't they? Chickens, they're, they're always up on like they're, they're always up on fences. Upwards of about thirty yards or so. A yeah, thirty they can, yard, they the can fly for all upwards of maybe thirty feet. Well, you're not 30 feet tall, so yeah, they're getting on <laughs> no, top yeah, of you and they're tall. taking Watch you out. A chicken. Watch a chicken fly. It's, no, it's just kind of jumping, and it's a buzz. They fly like Buzz Lightyear. They fall with style. What the hell are we chickens. talking about here? A thousand chickens. We're dude, talking about a so six-foot-eight Samoan murdering a thousand chickens. Can we talk about you got how you three's chicken wings? We got another Australian football player who yeah, just did. looks like a baby Jordan Mylotta. It looks like we he literally shit yeah, out a clone of himself, <laughs> and we signed him. Like, why is nobody talking about this? Who is this guy? Is he just, like, made in a lab somewhere with Jordan's DNA? Did they splice that shit in a laboratory? That's, I don't think yeah, people that's... have are comfortable pronouncing his name, so I think that's I don't – like... you notice I didn't say it. <laughs> so i got i got a question who would win uh, the Eagles starting o-line uh, uh, assuming that tyler steen is the starter at right guard who would win in a chicken wing eating contest on your current starting o-line who do you got i think landon dickerson could challenge i'd probably go oh, landon yeah landed yeah landed yeah. landed could put it i mean that i know can't put away cam Jer- Cam Jurgens probably puts it away too. Like he's yeah. from he, he's from what Nebraska? Was it well, Nebraska? He's a beef, right? he's a beef jerky man. I mean, you know he's eating. Yeah, he, he's 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 putting Cam jerky down. Jerkins. Yeah, he's uh, those are the two countryest dudes on the line, right? Like, yeah. As, you know, I, man, have to go. Landon can fit in those bib overalls. I will That's say, I, I will say, Coach, there. the Bankstown bodyguard, you did some research on Bankstown. That's that's as country. That's a pretty country it rural also, place in Australia. They, and you know that boy's eating. 
You, but Australia, Australia is like we different. talking about his pregame meal. Also, Jordan, what the hell are you doing on other podcasts? I got, <laughs> I got a out right now. Come I back. Got a, I got Come a back. question for you guys. Yeah. Would you guys want to do a beef jerky uh, review or live on the pod one time? Like we all get it and take a bite of it and say like, Hey, like what, what do we think about it? And you know, maybe he'll, maybe, maybe, maybe Cam himself will reach out and want to be a part of that. Maybe I like that I'll idea. Order, order it right now. Will you? I, I'm ordering wow. it now. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Is it available for us to order? And I'm sure it goes down really nice with some Dewey beer as well. Yeah, and Dewey Dan beer and Cam, and Cam Jurgen's beef jerky. Come you on. Kidding me? I got the Sun Camp right here. It's an APV, a 6%. It's a West Coast delicious IPA. Uh, while I'm ordering the while I'm ordering this, same kind of concept. Who's doing a uh, a beer mile the fastest on that O-line? Lane Johnson. I think Wayne. Lane Johnson's got Wayne. some loyalty to him. I think he's a, a sneaky endurance kind of guy. He's slimming up over the over his career. I think he, I mean, unless Tyler Steen knows something we don't know, I, I think it's Lane Johnson. Yeah, I go with Lane as well. Trying, it's called Jergy, is what it's called. I'm trying to get it. Beef Jergy. Yeah, I feel like you'd have to just like walk into the place just because of go. how many orders they would get jerky.co all right uh getting the bundle you think get a little bundle of all of them or are we just picking one of them they got five flavors teriyaki mango habanero original hot honey and cracked pepper get the bundle get the bundle why would we, well, we, we, we hot, hot, hot honey hot honey and cracked pep is is that all one flavor hot honey and cracked pepper no it's two separate? different ones hot honey uh, is maybe. one cracked pepper is another also you find hot anything honey hot honey well. and i'm slamming it Coach, you know, when I was down oh, I visiting you it. in Jacksonville, I got a hot honey pepperoni pizza, and people were like oh, around there. I guess it's so not good. as big of a thing over there. I asked them, I was like, hey, can, can you put hot honey? Because they saw they made uh, Nashville hot chicken at one of the, the restaurants. It's like, hey, I see you guys put hot honey on your chicken. Can you put some of that on my pizza? And like everybody at the one bar you recommended down in Jacksonville were like, you're, what are you talking about? Hot honey pepperoni? And I gave like all the bartenders a slice and they lost their fucking minds. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Spreading the love. Have to. All right. We got it coming in. I'll have to, obviously I'll have to mail it out to you boys individually. Um, Ooh, I love it. A corduroy jerky hat. That's kind of, that's kind of fresh too. Yeah, there we go. Pretty dope. Um, Still think I still think uh, Samoans taking a thousand chickens all day. I mean, it's not he's not walking out unscathed. He's not walking thousand. out unscathed again. That's a lot of chickens again. It's I not in the ten just... by ten room. It's out in a field, and yeah, it's like you're going to get so thing. many of them around you at one. And why are you fighting if you're out in a field? Why are you even fighting a thousand chickens at this point? Dude, I'm not telling you the parameters. I'm just setting the scene. If you okay. watch or have extensive like viewing knowledge of watching different animals fight. You would know that most evenly matched animals simply stop fi fighting because of exhaustion. Like nobody wins. They just kind of crawl off and half the time they die because of their wounds like together. Like nobody wins these things. So I think that Jordan Mailata would fight until he reaches complete exhaustion and then would die later on of exhaustion. How's that? That's my answer. What, answer. what better way to get him back on the show than to ask him this question to see what he has? Uh, How many chicken could you take it once before you die of exhaustion, Jordan? That's, I think that's a better way to phrase it. Let him set the number. Yeah. Let him set the number. I got a chicken guy. Maybe we can set this up. Over under is 999 and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. <laughs> taken under uh, philadelphia phillies fast second fastest franchise history to get 30 wins they did so in 43 games with back-to-back -back big wins against the mets last night obviously a huge comeback called the comeback uh so as you know talking to and five always on this shit really uh really impressive what they're doing with the amount of starters that are out i mean harper was out today turner's out for still at least another month according to to him who knows how long that's going to be jt seems to be continually lingering schwarber came back today so that was nice uh but you're seeing a lot of different guys that you did not expect to see playing as much whit merrifield is exactly who i said whit merrifield was uh after he started playing because if anybody listened to me uh, when we signed him i loved the signing um quickly quickly soured whit merrifield sucks he's down now batting 184 with a 556 ops 
and a 253 on base percentage. That's There's awful. somebody on Twitter that calls him Wit Josh Harrison Merrifield. Yeah, that's oh. perfect. <laughs> With a worst walk-up song. That's exactly who he is. Does he have a bad one? What is it? What? No, I don't even know what Whit Merrifield's walk-up song is, but I just remember enjoying Josh Harrison, his walk-up song. <laughs> I I cannot stand Whit right, right at this moment, but I tell you what, just going from if, – if he's batting leadoff and Stubbs is in the nine hole, like that turn, that 9-1 turn is just the most automatic two outs ever. That is such – a, a, a crusher of any any uh yep. momentum that you have it's done good it's news done. i actually had his stats wrong he's batting 175 not 180 can I'm, someone I'm dunk on him for that for the whit merrifield take did, did did anyone disagree with jake about that or like Look, the guy, the guy for, for 102 games last year he was a 303 hitter and the he last led the league in hits like th- two or three years ago he led the league in hits yeah like he I was excited about it. I was like, look, this is our guy off the bench. He's a super utility. He can play any position other than catcher. I I love the signing. And then spring training, he was our best player in spring training. Guy was hitting the cover off the ball, was leading the the team in average and everything. Guy was doing everything. Soon as the season started, he has been hot garbage. I'm going to be honest. I... You talked about second fastest to 30 wins, most wins in Major League Baseball right now with all these injuries. I don't really have much to add to this conversation because I don't have anything like to say about how the Phillies are winning because I don't know how they're winning. I have no clue how when the game is over, they have more. Like, I don't get – do you guys remember – you do – when we needed to beat Dallas to get into the playoffs and we had a skeleton crew with Wentz with like Robert Davis – and um, yeah, yeah, God, yeah. Deontay, Bur- Deontay Burnett, JJ or Sega Whiteside was in there. JJ, Greg Ward, those were like the targets. And I was like, there's no way we're beating Dallas. And we came out and we did it. And they were like, how'd you do it? I'm like, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. we just, we had more points at the end of the day. And that's what's going on with these Phillies. You said it, Trey Turner's out. Bryce Harper missed a game today. Schwarber was out for the last three. JT's missed the last three. Stubbs is not a major league baseball player at 88. all. Oh, yeah. 88. And like Sean said, you go from Stubbs to Wit, and it's like you, you can go to the bathroom. You can leave. Like you, They're not getting a hit. They're that bad. And so I honestly have nothing to provide to this conversation, guys, because I, I'm, I'm happy that they're winning, but I genuinely can't tell you how. They're win- is, I don't know. I mean, they're yeah. winning because is, Stott is a man possessed all of a sudden. Yes. Boom, as soon as he gets the bases loaded, is just get, leaning into these pitches. <laughs> He's just and catching fast And walking in runs over here. Our starting pitching, listen, I, I, I'll i give props every time they're due and every time I'm critical of somebody. Uh, Aaron Nola pitched a gem amongst gems earlier today. Yeah. Right? When Completely we needed it most. Barely crossed a hundred pitches, just just nasty business, man. I I I honestly I also don't know. Like it's it's baseball. You talk about watch if you watch it long enough, you know you, you always seem to see something new somehow, and that's what it feels like here, right? I have no a clue how this team is with winning. Allowing a hit, like you get to the ninth inning, and I'm like. How are we ahead? I've done nothing but curse to the high. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the three pitch inning he had when he allowed a hit. Yeah, that was incredible, right? It took a minute and 28 seconds to have an entire inning. It was three pitches. I've never seen such a thing. Nothing makes sense with this team, but it's it's like. Nothing makes sense. This is the most memeable team ever. There's some weird shit that happens every single game. I've never seen anything like it. Never. It, it's really, it's really weird. I don't, I, I don't know how to be before, before the ninth inning today, the Phillies were one for their last 20 with runners in scoring position. And do you know what that one hit was? Garrett Stubbs drag bunt. Yeah. Uh, with a runner on third with two outs, which he should have never done to begin with. Other than that's that, the they would have been, o- get a hit. They would have been over 20. Bunt man. And that's, that's what I'm saying. And then you look up and they're like, Oh, the Phillies swept the Mets. And I'm like, I think it was Greg yeah. Murphy today was spent like an hour trying to find the last time Garrett Stubbs made three consecutive starts in his career. Never, never, right? Was it? Not and that, there's not a the reason major. for it, man. The throwing the majors. There's, there's a I'm reason. Gonna on, like, I'm going to be honest with you guys. N- none of us are professional baseball players, but if any of the four of us went up there and just held the bat on our shoulders, 
we'd probably have a better on base percentage because odds are that pitcher may walk us once or twice without swinging. Yeah, we would have a better on base percentage. Aaron than, Stubbs than is a Stubbs. 184 on base percentage. So if you get two walks out of 10, out of 10, you don't even swing the bat. You just rest it there and you look cool for your baseball card. If you get yeah. two walks out or of 10, you, you stand real hot, like real high up in the box and you get hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Play a little boom. No, it's I, uh, it's not. I, I just, I, it gets, it drives me crazy when the the play by play guys are like, "Oh, Stubbs, he's such, he's doing such a good job, like grabbing all the balls back there. He's <laughs> diving to the left and he's diving oh, yeah, I mean, to he's, the right. He has to make he's so okay. many athletic plays. Okay, that's because the guy is four Five. foot ten and ninety six pounds. Any ball that's out of the strike zone, he has to dive for. It is insane." Telling me that these that that him and JT are both the same species, much less the same position for the same sport. It blows my mind. Now, what's nuts is like two years ago, the Phillies were the catching prospect team of the majors. They had oh, they were just loaded with catchers. You you want to trade with the Phillies? Take a catcher. They you get a catcher. You everybody gets a catcher. That we had nothing but catchers, and now we have the worst catching core outside. It's like coach. Well, like, Ra- Rafael Marchand. Rafael Marchand is back, but he's the Nicobe Dean of the Phillies yeah. minor league system. He's a guy that we always keep talking about, but every time you look, there's a different injury, and you're like, man, that. Kobe Dean's still young. He's been a good one. Then he's 32 and he's played four games in his career. You know, like, it's... <laughs> yeah, I mean, Rafael Marchand was a top 100 prospect not that long ago. Can't stay healthy, man. No, can't stay healthy. No, and then obviously Logan O'Hoppy, we traded. He's having a, a pretty solid season. I mean, he's, he's in, and uh, yeah, LA. Angels. So it's like, who, who the hell cares? cares? Um, and then look, bring up Jordan Disson, Disson, whatever. Everybody's favorite uh, high A Lakewood Jersey Shore Blue Claws catcher. I have no clue who that is. People are talking about him on Twitter. I don't know. People like him. <laughs> the... He's liked. He's, he's, he's a liked. liked guy. Yeah. He's, liked. he's a liked guy. Uh, Ranger Suarez going to win Cy Young. I'm cashing that in. I'm surprised they haven't already paid me uh, for that bet because he's, he's just incredible. Alec Boom, outside shot at MVP. 50 bucks for four grand. You gotta, you gotta make that, gotta make that deal. It's a damn good deal. Got I mean, no almost shot. the best thing that happened was, was Wheeler, you know, getting a shit. Yeah. Rock yeah. Start. And I mean, they still won that game. So it's, you know, and they still won. It's so weird how this keeps happening. Cause even the last couple no, of starts, no, they lost that game. Even well, the last couple starts for Wheeler, uh, he was, oh, yeah. he was miss, missing his spot. Some things just looked off and you kept thinking like, there's just yeah, this they, they magic. Where, like we're playing. We're playing the worst teams ever, or every team just how happens to be the worst team of all time as soon as they come to play us. And he didn't I mean, get Christopher Sanchez did his job yesterday. He had the wheels knocked off him early, held in, went six, he gave up three. Loads, loads the bases, has a mound <laughs> visit because his hand is falling off, right? And then strikes three guys out in a row, no problem. Oh, what nine, is nine this? pitches. <laughs> what is this? I, it's like, stupid. Then this team doesn't make sense. Nothing I'm makes sense. The second half of it. This sounds inning. nah. This sounds like the Eagles like last year when they were just winning. It didn't. None of their wins made sense. Or is this yeah. sustainable? No. Uh, uh, this is a lot more sustainable than the Eagles. Uh, no, I'll tell you this. Yes. What if the Eagles were doing that last year, but AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, uh, and Hassan Reddick were out? Then you'd yeah, be like, yeah. okay, once we're once we're clicking on all cylinders, once we get yeah, our guys, and, that, back, and we're baseball, be good. And we're baseball has a lot of five to seven. Half these games are like eight nothing. Like I don't know, I don't yeah. understand. Like when we score They're four or five fucking... points, and like that or runs, so like that's totally normal. But I feel yeah, like we we're not happen. we're not winning six to five. Like we're we're predominantly winning by, like it's Phillies minus two and a half is almost like okay, like let's make a little bit of money here. Yeah, but but that's that's a perfect analogy that Tom just came up with the Eagles of last year because I tell people this and they don't believe me. You know we finished with the thirty first ranked defense, right? Thirty first. We weren't dead last. We were thirty first. You would all agree that defense was a horrible problem last year. Do you know the two teams that we held to their lowest point total this past year? The Chiefs and the Dolphins. The Chiefs and the Dolphins, who both finished in the top five in NFL and offense. That was the two games that our defense played lights out, held the Dolphins to 10 and held the Chiefs to, what, 16? 17. Something like that. 
Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense at all. Nothing makes sense. But that's sports, man. That's that's that is what it is. Yeah. Look, Phillies are looking damn good. I'm just happy about that. Final thoughts, gentlemen. Tom, final thought. Hey, man, you know me. NFL schedule release. I get to uh, wonder about what games I'll be going to. I'll wonder about what matchups are, are ones I'm circling even more. And uh, I'll wonder about uh, which what's our win-loss. And I, I'm hoping for 10-5. So 12-5 uh, or better. So uh, I want that one seed and starts getting real tomorrow, boys, or whenever we, whenever we see the schedule release. So can't wait. Hell yeah. Sean. Listen, man, don't matter how many of our superstars are out this season, everything's going to be a O a O K. Mm. Mm. Coach. Final thought. Elliot Shore parks. Show yourself. Come out from hiding. You're not on vacation. WIP. Stop trying to run um, witness protection for him. Let him out to face the music. We just want to talk. We just, just want to talk. talk. Just want to talk. Just want to talk. Uh, final thought, Instagram, Twitter, giving away a pair of tickets to this Sunday's game. Uh, if somehow you have missed that, definitely check out what we got going on there. And then, obviously, we have the free beer tailgate. Do we beer served up ice cold in the G-Lot on Sunday? Sean and I will be there, and hopefully you will too.